You're listening to the Be Chic University podcast, and I am your host, Brittany Ball. On this show, we discuss all things millennial, but some of my favorite topics are money advice, career moves, productivity hacks, and managing a side hustle from five to nine when you have a nine to five. Catch these golden nuggets on the Be Chic University podcast as we dig into the millennial lifestyle with a hint of professional chic advice from yours truly. Tune in weekly for fresh content and check out my blog 24-7 for even more at bchicu.org. Now, let's get into the episode. Before we start this episode, I just have to preface this with I am going through a terrible allergy episode right now. I think that my body is still adjusting to the new home. So please excuse my congestion and shortness of breath. I am okay, but I'm just going through this real quick. Um, I still wanted to give you all this episode this week, so bear with me. Hello, beautiful people. It is Brittany here with the Be Chic University podcast. Thank you for tuning in again. This week, we are continuing our conversation about the home purchase that me and my husband, Nick, had this past month in September, but the process had been going on since May. It has been a long process, but a lot went into every step, and we tried to be very intentional about our process, seeing that I was learning more about the real estate industry, and so that kind of gave us an advantage, but also learning and experiencing a lot of things for the first time as first time home buyers and then also being in a state that we were not too familiar with since we did just move here a year ago. I might have mentioned before that we did have a realtor who was very experienced, very relatable for us as well and I found her through Instagram. I started following a Dallas real estate hashtag on Instagram and I really loved her presence. So I reached out to her to be our agent in our home finding process, and she was a great mentor to have just through the process as first-time homebuyers, but then also for me personally as someone who is studying to get their sales license in the coming week. (laughs) Fingers crossed, I actually take my test on Saturday. So at the beginning part of this process, kind of the pre-work included getting our credit in a position that we were most confident in before completing our loan application, and then just determining what our budget was. So these things were discussed with our agent in our first meeting. Um, It's considered like a discovery call or a first time buyer meeting, you know, whatever the agent decides to call it. But it really is an opportunity for you to get an understanding as the buyer, the process, what you need to do on your end to prepare, and then also what to look forward to in the coming weeks. So we actually signed up for a joint account on my FICOscore.com and then later switched over to Experian to get a full look at our credit reports and also the details on there. So our various creditors, uh, payment history, inquiries, all of that, just to make sure it was correct. And so we did actually go with a credit repair company here in Dallas to um, get rid of any inaccuracies and kind of help us boost our score by making it look better. But for how much we pay, it wasn't really worth it. <laughs> and when I talked to Nick about it, he was like, yeah, it's a good tool. But for us, it just wasn't worth how much we paid, which I totally agree. So that's something to consider. Just take it with a grain of salt, whether you think that'll be good for your situation. But that's pretty much what we did with our credit and then also paying down any debts that we had. So even things that are like in good standing still need to be addressed if your credit utilization is too high. And so that has a big impact on your score as well. So any extra money that we had earlier on in the process that we wanted to use to bring our credit utilization down, we actually did that and made sure that we were as close to like 0%, which is basically close to a $0 balance on our credit cards as well. And um, that doesn't affect your 
larger types of debts like your student loans or your car notes like those are considered good debts however if you do have a high balance on let's say student loans that might affect your application negatively so something to consider I unfortunately have a decent amount of student loan debt because I did get quite a few loans in graduate school but we were able to you know avoid any issues that that might have posed in the loan application and underwriting process Another thing that we identified with our agent right away was our budget. And we started with just how much we wanted to pay in our mortgage. And we really compared it to what we were currently paying for rent. So based off of our current payment and how much we thought we could stretch above that and still live comfortably is where we based our monthly payments around. And then from there, you would just multiply your um, anticipated mortgage to get the total home um, value or the sales price that you could reach for. And so after determining that, we were kind of able to step back and see, okay, with that being added to um, an interest and taxes and home insurance payments, what did that all come out to and we would be able to afford it? One tool that Nick loved using throughout the entire search process were just free mortgage calculators online. And those really allowed us to get a somewhat accurate snapshot of what we would be paying. Although you do have to estimate on your own what your interest rate would be and um, a few other factors, it was still helpful to kind of narrow down what your budget was. So that's something that we used heavily when looking at homes within our price range, but wanting to get a better idea of how much we would pay. So it literally came down to us jumping on our agent's website, which was direct access to what's called the MLS, where um, homes for sale are listed. And we would narrow down our search to our price range in the neighborhoods that we were looking at, and then compare all of them by monthly payments using a mortgage calculator. So that was very helpful for us in the process. And then there was a ton of going back and forth, determining what we believed would be our ideal budget, including additional utility costs, um, additional transportation costs with us being closer to my job, but further from Nick's job and just any other additional um, utilities or just living expenses that come along with the home that we didn't have with renting. We added that into our budget when we learned of those things and then continued to adjust it to see, is this possible? And as we continue to go along the process, we realized that it was possible. So we were still focused on purchasing a home because we were able to fit it into a working budget. On top of that, we also did a lot of savings and we pretty much had separate strategies because we have different approaches to saving and then combine all of our money obviously together at the end so that we could pay for our closing costs and our down payment. I was very methodical with my process so I followed the very structured savings plans that I found that seemed to have worked for me in the past. For example, the weekly savings plan where you follow a chart and it'll say, you know, week one, you save this amount of money. And then when you get to like week 15, you're saving, uh, who knows, five, 10 times the amount that you save that first week. Having a plan to keep me focused was very helpful in building up my savings very quickly. We did have savings before the home purchasing process, but it was a lot easier for me to save a lot more in the end because I had the motivation of a home purchase just months in advance. For Nick, it was more of a case-by-case situation. He gets paid weekly and so every week he would look at his bills and his budget and say, okay, I feel comfortable paying this amount on this uh, credit card and I feel comfortable putting this extra amount into my savings for the home. And then just taking that 
strategy week by week, but still being disciplined enough to consistently put money into savings really worked for him. And so in the end, we were able to combine our savings and we had what we needed to put money down, cover our closing costs, and then still have funds for any initial repairs and upgrades that we wanted to do to the house right away when we moved in. So that was kind of the pre-purchase process and the strategies that we took in order to make sure that we could comfortably live in our home by the time we moved and to be able to cover all of our expenses within that closing process and then also the first month's expense. Um, Like many loans, we did not have to pay rent for that first full month. We didn't have to pay our mortgage I keep saying rent because I'm used to saying rent but we didn't have to pay our mortgage in October we will start paying in November because of our closing being halfway through September So the actual loan process begins when you complete your loan application. So we completed our loan application, I believe, at the end of July. And that's when we pretty much were officially starting the process with the lender, um, collecting all of our personal information, checking our credit and um, approving us for a loan, whether that be conventional or FHA. And for people who are veterans of VA loan and those who are into agriculture, Um, which is probably not many people listening to this podcast, but there are loans um, for people who want to use their land for farming and such. So that pretty much started our process out in being able to finally look at homes and tour them, go to open houses because we pretty much received our pre-qualification by just providing information about our jobs, our um, cash on hand, all of our bank accounts, investments, and who knows, like a bunch of other stuff, our blood type, <laughs> just a lot of details for them to basically say, okay, you are qualified for this type of loan, although we aren't doing like a hard inquiry on your credit yet. We can at least say that you're in a position to look at homes for purchase. So with that whole process, what we ended up doing was getting down payment assistance through a first time home buyer program here in Texas, which was very helpful because it actually applied to our closing costs and we were able to pay less at closing, which is great. And that was given to us by our lender after talking to us, getting to know our situation and having someone who is invested in learning about you to understand what programs are best fit with you and your uh, financial situation or your home ownership status. That is very crucial. So we were able to take advantage of something like that with our lender. Throughout the entire process, it was a lot of waiting, but there was still a lot of communication back and forth between Nick and our lender, our loan officer. I actually was not on the loan application. I was not uh, considered for the mortgage. And we decided to do this because it would be less of a financial burden for both of us to be tied up in that process. So once we feel established with our home, we can actually go out and, you know, get rental property, but in my name. And although... We do live in a state where one person purchases the home while we're married. The other person's name goes on the deed as well because we're married. So I still have the same amount of equity and interest within this home as Nick does because we're married. However, the financial process of having our credit looked up and having that hard inquiry put onto our accounts and things of that nature that has to do with the loan application, which is very strict, makes it a lot easier for me to do that later on if he was just the only person on this loan application. So I had it kind of easy, but not really. 
because there was documentation that had to be provided that I might have had to help Nick get that information being that I worked at home and he did not. So I had more flexibility to kind of take care of some things right away. And also just documentation that had to do with me as well that I helped provide. I will say because of the coronavirus running rampant in the U.S. and there being a lot less in-person meetings, we were able to do a lot of things through digital communication, such as email, um, the bank's online portal, DocuSign, and the like. All of that was very accessible and made a priority because of COVID-19 and new guidelines within the organization's. I saw that as a benefit because schedules at different companies were a lot more flexible. We actually had a lot of calls with our loan officer on weekends because that's when he was free to talk to us. And we didn't have to run around town to meet him and our agent and look at homes and all of that on weekends. We were able to do a lot of things online or over the phone. I believe that was a result of COVID-19, but also because we just live in a more digital age, more things are being done online. So we were able to cut out a lot of extra communications that are normally in person. A small downfall to that, though, is there is um, parts of communication that are removed from the process because we aren't meeting in person. I feel like we could have had a bit more education around Purchasing a home, the process and things to look out for as first time home buyers, if we probably were in person, I can't necessarily say that that was a determining factor in our experience, but I kind of expected more of a guided approach from our lender. It wasn't a bad experience, but I will say that me having my real estate license education going on at the same time made me a lot more aware of things that were coming up in the process and then some of our consumer rights. So another thing that really helped us out was having all of our documents associated with our application readily available and digital so that applies to bank statements, check stubs, account information, including our investments in 401ks. All of those things are requested by the lender and having those digitally, whether it be on Google Drive or on your laptop, just makes it so much easier and saves a lot of time when you can just pull those things from a folder and send it over to the lender as quickly as one business day. That makes a huge difference in what is called the underwriting process in order to get approved for financing for your home and getting you one step closer to closing day. So that's something that really benefited us. And that is the area in which I supported Nick in having some documentation already ready for him. So when he had to send that over to our loan officer, it was very quick and quite painless. And the last thing is just when we stayed on top of all of our things, it was with the goal in mind of moving our closing date up faster, but there was still a lot of administrative things happening on the back end with our lender. So we actually were in jeopardy of not closing on time and it had nothing to do with us. It just has to do with the market being very busy right now and a lot of people wanting to purchase. So it was pretty much like, overwhelming for all of the lenders and all of the underwriting departments to be able to process all of their requests in a short period of time. So we somewhat helped ourselves out by being able to reply and provide any information that was requested of us in a timely manner because that cut out extra time needed for the closers and underwriters and all of those people involved with the lender to do their part in time for us to actually close on the date that we initially intended to.
So as it relates to working with our lender, there were a few things that I learned and thought that it would be helpful to share. So just asking questions and not feeling like anything is a dumb question because you might feel inadequate, like you don't understand something, but it truly is like an industry thing that needs to be explained more. So that's something I had to become more familiar with and more comfortable with just being (laughs) comfortable with saying, hey, I don't understand what this says or this does not look right. Can you tell me why this is stated this way? So they at least know that you are doing your part and like reading through all the documentation and taking it seriously. We had texts and calls with our loan officer all the time and he was fine with answering questions, you know, even on weekends. If he can't, he just won't answer. And that was another barrier. We kind of had to get over realizing if he's working, He's going to get to us. If he's not, then we'll just have to reach out later. But kind of getting over ourselves and feeling like we have to understand things easily isn't always the case. And that's how it was with securing the loan for the home. Another quick thing. I don't think this has to do with every transaction, but we did have a few forms that had to be signed and notarized. And with us being in the middle of COVID, you know, some places were closed for business. And this is something that you need in person. This is basically a person who's registered with the state who can actually attest to your signature and your identity on an an important document, mostly financial or business oriented. I learned that I could just go up to UPS and get that form notarized, but it took a lot of stress and I don't know why. And a lot of time for me to figure out that that was an option. And the fact that it was just a walk-in type situation. I did not have to schedule an appointment. So if you need to get a form notarized, whether it has to do with the home purchase or not, UPS is your place to go. And we also live in a time where checks seem pretty much irrelevant and not really a thing anymore. But checks are so helpful and so easy, especially compared to cashier checks and money orders when it comes to your closing costs. So if you still have checks for any of your bank accounts Hold on to them because they will be helpful during the closing process for your home. And who knows, maybe even a random bill or two that needs a check written in the last minute. So that's everything that I can think of, at least, that has to do with the financial aspect of our home purchase. I hope this information was helpful for you. This was somewhat of a unique experience because we are living through COVID. But also, some of these things will still affect home buyers when it's not COVID you basically just want to make sure that you're making the best decision for your financial future making sure you're comfortable enough with the decision you're making financially and emotionally which I'll talk about more in a future episode as always thanks for tuning in and be sure to share this episode with a friend if you believe that it was great content and you want them to be informed as well follow me at the be chic on facebook twitter and instagram and check out my website bchq.org for more content thanks for tuning in talk to you next time